On this episode of Beer, Blues, and BS, your good brothers are back on the mics, and we're bringing you all the audio goodness. We're talking movies. We're talking Bond. We talk a little wrestling. We talk Star Trek wine. Hey, I even have a hot take that I hit you right off the bat, and it's a good one. It's ooh, it's spicy. It's hot. Oh, we're going to have a good time. You're in a good place. Welcome to the show. It's Howard Blues and V Mark Kidder. Pork Gold Beverage, Porpoises, and your time with friends. The Triple B! Well, the Triple B sucks. Okay? Oh, come on. Whatever, man. This is Beer, Beer Blues, and BS. Online at BeerBluesBS.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Beer Blues and BS, the podcast for when you want to start a riot, but you don't know when to start it. I'm your host, Howard Blues, here, as always, with my co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, the Mark Kidder. Kidder, how you doing tonight? Well, Howie Blues, right now, I'm doing all right. But, you know, uh, we got to give it five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Then we'll see. See how it goes, you know. See how the train rolls into 2023. And of course, for those watching or listening, it's already 2023. So it's a blast from the past. And yes, styling and profiling with the Triple B shirt this evening, which you can get at beerbluesbs.com. <sighs> What's new in your world? Well, I, I'm glad you mentioned the shirt, Kitter, because one, it looks good on you. Got to say you. that. Thank you. But uh, I, I'm glad because uh, I, I wanted actually something uh, that I got uh, for Christmas uh, from my sister-in-law, my my awesome sister-in-law. She, uh, for, for years now, many years, I have frustrated her because I have a pretty good ability to be able to, like, pick up a present and know exactly what it is. And it frustrates her. So this year she tried to... Uh, uh, to basically challenge me. She tried to really uh, make it difficult for me to, to tell. Um, and she got me because Kidder, uh, as you can see, I'm wearing it, but it is for me a brand new uh, Fighting Sue hockey jersey. And uh, what makes this one even more special is uh, if you can uh, see there, that might give a hint at what's on the back. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's the old number 11, which can mm -hmm. only be my favorite player that I uh, got to watch uh, play for the Sioux. One, Zach Parisi, the uh, former member of the Minnesota Wild and now a New York Islander. So, yeah, a Parisi jersey. I, I didn't good. see that one coming. I, I, I just, I did. So, well, good. I mean, you do need more jerseys and more fighting Sue in your life. Yeah, I, I, I honestly can't complain. It's it's nice. It's comfortable. It's good. So I, I figured I'd wear it, you know, show it off because uh, as we know, I'm cursed. So anytime I really try to celebrate the uh, Sue or follow the Sue or pay attention to the Sue, they lose. So <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the one and only appearance of this jersey on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> uh <clears throat> okay well there's that so i guess uh we need to just continue on with the show then and uh have a drink right uh that would be good kidder because we've actually been talking for quite a while before the show and i i didn't bring anything uh down to like drink before what's on tap so i've been wanting to kick off the show so we could get to what's on tap because i'm ah. thirsty man i'm does feeling that, a bit parched does that mean we need some cheap plugs and we're out of here um no man that would be that would be far too short of a show i i, I think this is gonna be a good one i can no. feel there's there's an energy already it can only go downhill from here that's that's the truth of it the shark no. May jump the track. We'll see what the train does and what the shark does and why the train might be in the water. Eh. Hey, could just be a land shark. Hey, speaking of land sharks, how about we go ahead? What's on tap tonight? Because <laughs> I got myself one of them there land sharks. There you go. 
That's that's what we call an impromptu transition. <laughs> the people are going to accuse us of scripting because that was just too weird of a transition. <laughs> to <make> it. <laughs> it just, weirder things have happened, but here it is. This one's been waiting in my upstairs fridge for a long time, and I finally brought it down tonight because I need to drink it. Is this thing expired? <laughs> Where's the date? <laughs> I don't see a date on here. Uh, well, we'll uh, we'll hope. What does this say? Uh, I don't know. But there's some stuff floating in there, so that's always good. Uh, <laughs> that's that's wonderful. All right, four point six alcohol by volume for this twelve ounce glass beer bottle. And the contents inside, 1.2 grams of protein. Hmm. Uh, tap into your beer.com as well for a land shark lager, the premium quality island style lager. Uh, fins up, by the way, from the Margaritaville Brewing Company in St. Louis, Missouri. Landlock State bringing you an island beer. Look at that. Nice and frothy. It doesn't smell too bad either. So uh, cheers to you, Howard, and here's to not being expired. I mean, it doesn't really taste skunky. So we're at like an 80% um, okay beer. Yeah. You know, I always liked Land Shark. I mean, is it is it knock your socks off good no but i always liked it I have to say that it does not uh, taste like the last time i had a land shark but that was also many years ago i don't know it's just not as uh, as sweet as i remember what do you got tonight well kidder i didn't learn my lesson from last week um so <clears throat> i uh, i'm still working through some interesting seasonal beers uh this time, we're going to uh, Sierra Nevada for their uh, Celebration Fresh Hop IPA. Ooh, an IPA. Kidder's Kryptonite. Um, but uh, like most uh, Sierra Nevada's cans, I got nothing on here, Kidder. I, I know it's 6.8% alcohol by volume, uh, but nothing. Not a flavor profile not a note kind of a bunch of propaganda and slogans so who knows what this could be all i know it's an ipa yep it's got the hops so see how this goes It's an IPA. They got a lot of hops. Not much of anything else. You know, there's not like any citrus mixed in or like anything else for a flavor profile. You would hate this. Uh, probably, yeah. 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 I mean, for like a celebration fresh hop IP, like with that name, I was thinking hopefully something more festive, you know? I mean, I don't need a repeat of the uh, cranberry cinnamon beer I drank last week. That was terrible. But, you know, if you're going to do a seasonal beer along these lines, you, you kind of wanted to invoke some kind of flavor profile of the season. I just, I don't know. I'm not picking that up. Yeah. So IPA, not even a good IPA in my book. Yeah. I'd probably give it a 2.25. How's that for a rating? It's pretty oh. high. <laughs> Sounds like well, a zero to me. <laughs> Listen, you know, um, as like the sole member of the Triple B family who seems to drink IPAs. Well, no, that's not true. Big D does drink IPAs. 
Yeah, but there's something wrong with him. As the sole decent member of the Triple B family who drinks IPAs. <laughs> ah, yes. Good correction. You know, I I, I have to get it. I don't know, a, a, at least a somewhat like of a, a true rating and not just immediately drop it to the bottom of the barrel. You know, got to make us have some sort of uh, cred with the IPA fans. So, yeah, so it's all right. Not the best. It's really just kind of bitter. And that's kind of it. It's yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds pretty damn boring. <laughs> it uh it really is. It's kind of disappointing, kidder. You know, hmm. I either want the stuff I'm drinking on this show to be really good or really terrible. When it's just kind of this, it's uh yeah. It just doesn't even give me anything to talk about. It's like it's hops. And I'm not one of those beer aficionados who can sit there and go, hmm, well, this is clearly Centurion hops. Or Lakewood's hops, or any other hops, you know, that, that see, I don't, I don't even know hops. But there's like millennial hops. I don't know. Millennials, they just live in the basements of the breweries. You uh, got to be careful, kidder. Technically, we fall into the category of millennial, like age range, what they say. Not that we are millennials or act like millennials, but we do technically fall into the what they define as the millennial age range. Well, we are both broadcasting from basements. There yes, are but, basements. But, but, we we yes. own them. <laughs> but they, they are basements. Uh, they, listen, <laughs> so I prefer the term cave of wonder. You know, that's my my story, and I'm sticking to it. Sure. Something wondrous. Say, hey, speaking of cave of wonder, you know, I know you know, but maybe those watching or listening don't know that we have a whole apparel line for Howard's Cave of Wonder. BeerBluesBS.com. Click Merch. That's our uh, official Beer Blues BS store. Howard's Cave of Wonder line on there. And my mom picked up a Howard's Cave of Wonder t-shirt. Wow. To support the Triple B and Howard's Cave of Wonder. That's uh, That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. No, I, uh, yeah, speaking of Howard's Cave of Wonder, I mean, I've been doing pretty well keeping up with that show and actually putting um, stuff out for it. Uh, Kidder, I know you don't really watch it, um, but if you did, I'd ask you, did you notice the intro changed? And uh, it's I got did. a new logo, even. Yeah, it's a little different. A little I different. did notice. Oh, thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Of course I watch our stuff. Somebody has to. <laughs> well, I mean, I watch it all in the editing process. So listen, I I know that Howard's Cave of Wonder is not meant to be your cup of tea, Kidder. I'm talking board games, modeling, and organization. It's just, I mean, you are an organized person, but it's not like I'm organizing DVDs. I'm organizing little plastic figures. So I just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect you to watch, but. Yeah, yeah, no, there's there's been some slight updates to the to the logo and to the intro to that show. You know, better camera technology and equipment and lighting that I didn't have when I did the original intro and trying to change some things up. It's, uh, it's doing well, but no, uh, you'll have to tell your mom thanks for, yeah, purchasing because that's cool. Well, that's cool. Absolutely. Glad. Are you play the play the intro now to show it off. Oh, for Howard's Cave of Wonder. Yeah, I mean, are you just going to point people to like a link up here in the video, or, or down in the show notes for the audio version? Uh, and, hey, click there. Probably a little of both, you know, because <clears throat> uh, I mean, it's it's one of those things of uh, 
you kind of got to see it. To, it's a visual thing. And yes, I could play it now and, and do that. But uh, I, I don't want to. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Scare people. Yeah. Listen, I, I know my hobbies are geeky and not everybody's cup of tea. I get that. But hey, it, it's out there for those who are interested in the topics I tend to talk about. <clears throat> it's a pretty interesting show as I rebuild this cave of wonder into something. So it's me documenting my journey, sometimes reviewing Kickstarters because that brings us views. Yeah. Views are good. Clicks mm-hmm. are good. We need to maybe make some more clickbaity bait things. Get some more views. We need to we need to go viral. Uh, I know uh, that you have a lot of uh, things on your mind. So maybe just maybe we need a Howard's hot take. Um, yes, we, we got to go viral. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so glad Kidder. So glad that you brought this up as I quickly, uh, <laughs> all to jot down the date of the deadline of something I need to mention later. Um, but, uh, anyway, Kidder, you want a hot take? No. <laughs> All right, folks. He said no. I guess uh, I'll just drink more of this IPA and sit here quietly. God, this sucks. <laughs> You're welcome, audio listeners. <laughs> What is it a hot hot take or is it a hot take or a mild take? I mean, just it, a well, take? are you it, taking it? it? It's a take hot it. take. I mean, I, I listen. I tried to throw it up like I normally do, and you, you shut me down, man. I, you know, I tried for <laughs> you consistency get for asking on the questions. I, I know. I listen. I thought it was a more of a rhetorical question. You know, I set you up. You say yes in some really cool way, and we we, we do a hot take, and that's. I thought that was the shtick. I, I wasn't prepared for a no. You know, you, you got the shtick, all right. <laughs> Whack! That's <laughs> how it goes, uh, apparently, on this Friday. Boo. Hey, a couple of weeks, we got uh, Friday the 13th. Just, just throwing that out there. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to dress, you know, normal and wear black. <laughs> Or it means I get to wear this jersey again. Wait. This episode is, is released on Friday the 13th. So I guess... There we go! Bam! <laughs> we planned! <laughs> that's a hot take by itself. Uh, that's not really a hot take. That's more of just sheer luck and coincidence. <clears throat> more like dumb luck, truthfully. Our luck. I still got that hot take, Kidder, if you want it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Might as well. We teed it up. You might as well hit it into the into the sandbox. Kidder, I'm glad you mentioned clickbait because, boy, am I kind of sick of uh, a couple of things of clickbait. I really do think that if you're going to post an article, you know, and, and get people to go to your site and read the article, don't drag people along. I get that the further they scroll down, the more advertising they see, the more money you make, but... Ah, I kidder, I, I I found a news story. It was interesting. I was like, this could be content for the show. Ten minutes of me scrolling later, I still can't <laughs> tell. Like it was about girl brings mysterious animal into vet and gets held there by the police. I'm like, well, what is this? Ten minutes. I still don't know what the animal is. They just kept referring to it as big critter. I just finally said, screw this and turn that off. But then the other thing that's been filling my feed is apparently a bunch of these people, well, these clickbaity guys, they're they're out there announcing, hey, what shows has Netflix just canceled? And of course, they've gone in and put, you know, the, the newest hotness of Netflix Wednesday up with a big canceled thing on it. So there's all these people going, oh, my God, I can't believe they canceled Wednesday. Listen, I've never been a fan of Wednesday. I always thought we should just skip from Tuesday to Thursday. That would be great. But still, this is just Home like, day. it's just upsetting people. And 
I get annoyed, one, because it's clearly clickbait, but two, the fact that people actually fell for this. I mean, I actually clicked on one of the comment sections on this. Mm -hmm. There was a whole bunch of people like, but this show just launched. I love this show. I'm only two in. What do you mean it's canceled? I'm just like, noobs. So, I mean, I get that clickbait works, and I get that people do it, but sometimes, sometimes it's just so stupid that I just, Mm -hmm. Yep. I totally agree. I I am not a fan of clickbaity titles. I'm not a fan of the leading titles. I like sharing information. Uh, maybe that's what's wrong with our show because you know we don't get all the clicks, so we got to get a little bit clickbaity. But <clears throat> yeah, the find out the wildest animal on the planet or some kind of other clickbaity. What wrestler isn't under contract anymore it's like somebody who just left the company you know it's like they were fired you know and i get it i understand they got to make money too and that's why they do it i just i i just wish they'd be far less annoying about it like there's one that i i have found a couple of times it's on it's a hockey one it is very clickbaity but what they're doing is they're i mean they're pulling like stuff from like the russian amateur league like player attacks referee with stick you know and it's like okay i clearly like they don't say in the headline you know like which league or anything so you click it and you read it it's like oh russia got it you know but at least i will give them this they keep the story to like one maybe two paragraphs and usually they have a video clip to show you whatever that is and, you know, and I, I, it's like, okay, well, yep, you got me. I was interested. That that hooked me. But at least you didn't waste my time with it. You know, you got me in there. You got me to read it. And you got me out. Sweet. I can, I can at least be okay with that. But yeah, this ten minutes of scrolling and the big critter. She found the big critter in a patch of moss. Oh God. <laughs> The, the second thing about an article like that is as you're reading it, the number of times they repeat themselves. When the parents showed up, they were upset that the police had held their daughter in custody. But once they said what was going on, they were relieved. You know, and then, <laughs> okay, great. So what did they say? What was this thing? Well, apparently the girl was on her bike and it's like, I just what is the damn animal? Why is everybody freaking out? I get upset about that stuff, Kitter, because you know me. I'm always trying to find interesting content to bring. I mean, this is where we got such great classics like the Killer Wedgie story from episode 30. Mm-hmm. That was great. That was fun content. I was hoping that this would be fun content. It was not. It just <laughs> ticked me off. That sounds about right. Yeah. Our blues, hot takes, and being pissed off why it's called a hot take kidder why it's called a hot take and besides i like to think that while we do try to employ some clickbait-esque tactics we at least deliver on all of the promises you know like the episode that came out tonight episode 91 regrettable life choices there are some regrettable life choices made throughout the course of that episode. Don't do that. There, there are literally times where people on that episode said, I regret this. You know, like we deliver on what we say. When we said, hey, McDon- you know, secrets of McDonald's exposed. We delivered. Yeah, you might have had to sit through like 45 minutes of other stuff to get there. But it was there and you got it. And... I always make a point of putting down all their chapters down in the show notes. So, hey, if you really just wanted that one piece that we drug you in for, you can go right to it, skip the whole rest of the show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we care about you and your time. That's right. Beer, Blues, and BS, the podcast that cares. Just bring. How's your Mm. IPA coming along? Oh, I am trying to get through this. I think that you need something better in your life and and what is that well i think you need some star trek wine in your life why because it's good it's like authentic 
the a full book. armada. Yeah. There's there's a couple of them available. Uh, StarTrekWines.com for the actual website to order them and have it shipped directly to your house. But uh, yes, I, I do have all of them. The interesting one to me is the the Cardassian Canar bottle. Because the bottle is a, a gorgeous in person, but it's exactly like it is on the show, Deep Space Nine. Very, very happy with how it turned out. Uh, aside from that, <clears throat> uh, mentioned it when came back from Las Vegas in the 56-year mission. We were able to go to the suite for an exclusive taste testing of the new Romulan uh, ale. And here you can see the, the photos of them. Uh, those are some of the new products as well. The, the two right here are the rice and wines. And I have those as well now. The updated Star Trek Picard, uh, Chateau Picard wine from season two of Picard. And there is uh, Romulan whiskey and Romulan vodka. So the ale <clears throat> in both the whiskey form and the vodka form. Very awesome uh, to get those and to try those. Have not actually tasted the rice and wine or, you know, the... Uh, whiskey or vodka by itself. They're both blue. <laughs> but, you know, one of these days, crack it open, try it, try the, the wines. I have tried the Sauvignon Blanc, the Klingon Blood Wine, and the uh, Grand, uh, let's see, <clears throat> the actual Chateau Picard wine. And also the Old Vine Zinfandel. And if you're a wine person, which I know this show isn't, you know, quite wine-esque, but <clears throat> very tasty. And the interesting thing about the Chateau Picard wine is that they have partnered with the actual Picard vineyard, the Chateau Picard, in real life. There is such a thing. And it wasn't started... Uh, because of Star Trek. They've actually been making wine for a long time. It's very interesting that, you know, it lives both in reality and in television. And and the wine is is good. Uh, that's a quick, quick thing about Star Trek there. And uh, the wines, they're going to be coming out with more of them, I'm sure, in the future. And some deals to get them as well. Hopefully, you can get your hands on some. Kinner, would you say you're a, a big wine person? I mean, I, I'm i not. I don't ever find myself going, hmm, I'd like some wine with dinner. I just, that's, <laughs> I don't know. I, I've never been, I've tried a lot of wine. I've tried a lot of different ones. I just, I know people that they have, they're like, oh, it's this? I love this type of wine. And mm -hmm. I, it's just never been anything I've been super interested in. Sure. Uh, I, too, have tried a lot of wine, thanks to the wine tastings we used to go to. <laughs> never missed one for like four and a half, five years. Perfect. I do have, uh, you know, just like beer or liquor. I, I have uh, wines that are on the top of my favorites list and ones that uh, not a fan of. And then others to make people aware of, like the sangria. <laughs> use it for parties only i'm not uh like a, a huge fan of uh sitting down or uh, like ah, i'm gonna have chicken so i need to have a a white wine with this one you know pair it with with something or i have steak so i need to have a specific red wine with with the steak and some of the the events that i've been to they have paired dinner with the wine choice and you know there is something to be had about having a wine that is paired with the food that you're eating because it all helps enhance the taste both ways between the type of wine and 
the food that you're eating. But when when I'm sitting here at home, I don't go through, you know, the one of the fast food restaurants, bring it home and then go, oh, I think this would pair well with the nice uh, uh, insert wine name here. <laughs> and sometimes we'll crack open a bottle of wine and then, you know, just drink the bottle because really it's a glass and a half each for for a bottle of wine. Uh, we'll probably, because Picard coming up in February for the uh, season three premiere, we'll probably crack open the new bottle, uh, as I showed you there with the, the silver metal uh, design on it. We'll probably open that one and enjoy that. Um, but that'll be just watching the show, drinking some wine. You know, I, I kind of got into that even years ago when uh, I was still in Grand Forks, probably due to the wine tastings. I also have to say that I didn't necessarily fall into the trap that we fell in with the beer tasting of getting to table eight and then, man, this is awesome. And then three days later, you try your part of your cash that you've uh, picked up and you get the table eight beer and go, Ugh, I need three before I drink one of those. I guess that was a bad decision. That's kind of where, where I am on it. Uh, I know you're not a huge, you know, wine fan, uh, but, uh, if there, if there were a special occasion or something that uh, you would be down here for, or I'd be over there for, you know, maybe bring, bring some wine or something, uh, kind of like when I would visit, uh, the Christmas gatherings or Thanksgiving gatherings with you and the family, bring a couple bottles of wine and just a little something to have different and then can have some beers afterward. Yeah. No, I just, I, yeah, I, I've just never been the type that's, yeah, had types of wine. Like, I, I couldn't tell you the difference between them or, I, you know, go, oh, this is my favorite type or that. I will say, I, I really haven't ever been at an event or a meal where, like, every course is paired with a wine. And I do think that would be an interesting experience. Like, I, I would give that a try. But I, I just, yeah, we, we, I don't even think. I think the wine that we have in our house, Skitter, is all wine that has been left here by other people. It's not <laughs> okay. anything that we bought. Uh, that's just what happens around here. More wine talk than you usually get on this show. We keep this up. We're going to have to rename us to uh, something like Wine Western and Whispers. I, there's really not a great W. I mean, we could do Wine Waltz and Whispers, but that just makes us sound really pretentious and like we're from the 1800 Victorian slash Gilded Age. Wine, wimps, and winners? Well, uh, listen, the, the, the naming formula is alcoholic beverage, <laughs> t genre or type of music, and then some sort of communication. That's, uh, that's the way I've always done this. So that's why I was going wine, western, and whispers although technically i guess you know if, if i was going to do western i would do whiskey so i would do like whiskey whis whiskey western whispers doesn't quite fit there wall bangers <laughs> <laughs> i can get behind the whiskey i'm i'm game for that I, I, let's do it uh man i i have kind of moved away from drinking whiskey no! Oh, I'm also sad. Oh, I do have a glass. Ha ha! Ah, the day is mine. That that makes me very sad, Howard. Well, my thing about whiskey is I've never really enjoyed drinking it straight, and so then I always have to mix it. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, okay. I, that's just more work, Kidder, than I I tend to always like to do. And I don't know. There's something about like I don't know. I've just I've moved away from whiskey. I, uh, if I'm going to go for something, I tend to go for gin these days more than anything. Mm. Yellow or, pine um, trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
do you love that taste of juniper? Um, <laughs> or I have that prickly pear vodka, but yeah, I mean, even then, like if you mixed alcohol or alcohol that you would tend to use in mixed drinks, I don't have a lot of that around my house either. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I went through that phase for, well, it wasn't a phase. I went through that stretch where due to <laughs> health issues, I couldn't drink alcohol. So, um, I had some ulcers in my esophagus and the constant alcohol uh, use was inflaming them and causing problems. So I was advised to stop drinking, um, which now you might go, but how are you drink like every week? Uh, Yes, but this is like the only two beers I drink or the only alcohol I drink in the week, Mm -hmm. two beers in a week, which is is significantly up. I mean, if you go back to the early episodes, I wasn't even drinking beer on the show for a while. I've had the most non-alcoholic drinks on the show. That happens, that, though. I make you look... I make myself look like a lush compared to you. Well, I mean, that's how it's always been, though. But that was because, like, back in college, and we've talked about this back in episode six of the podcast entitled The Slowest Beer Drinker in the West. I just... I always viewed it as like when we were got to drinking age and go out and you have your first meal where you have three beers with the meal and the tab comes and you're like, ah, crap. <laughs> that, that got significantly more expensive than I'm used to. I just, I got to a point where I was just like, I just, I have things I like to spend my money on. And I don't know, alcohol has never been like the top priority for me. I enjoy an occasional beer. I enjoy an occasional mixed drink, but I was never the type of like, let's go out to the bar and get drunk. I wouldn't uh, be a, I wasn't a huge fan of that. If I could get cheap drinks or free drinks, uh, that was always the, uh, the way to go. But uh, that's also why we ended up going to a couple different places on certain nights of the week, because it was like dollar 50 or $2 drink uh nights and you could have and then half off on the appetizers and different things yeah but even then like i i still i've always limited kind of how much i i drink and i mean it, it used to be like three beers with a meal was pretty common for me and then i had the ulcers and then i stopped drinking and let's it replace was, your innards <laughs> yeah it, well it was and it was one of those things, like the fridge that's now my beer fridge, like I've had for years, and there was hardly ever beer in the beer fridge. You know, it's, I moved into this house, and when we moved here, my dad's like, there better be beer in that fridge. <laughs> so, yeah, you're paying kinda, more for the electricity to cool the damn thing. Well, I we put other things in there, other groceries no. and such. It no. was kind of grocery overflow was what it was. But now it's my beer fridge, and I get to put beer in it, and I drink it on the show. But, yeah, I, I went through a stretch where I wasn't really drinking. And, but I, I, I think part of the, the cutting out whiskey was, you know, whiskey was what I would drink uh, most of the time before. Like, you know, I would have Jack and Cokes or things like that. And so when the ulcers hit and I cut back on everything, um, whiskey is one of the things that tend, tended to cause it to flare back up. So that's kind of why I was like, yeah, I'll move away. But I do, I, you know, when I come down there, I've had an occasional whiskey drink down there at your place. So it's not like I'm like, I will never touch whiskey again. It's just not, not what I go for. That would make me sad. <clears throat> but in honor of you and your alcohol that you can't always consume, I'm going to help you Help me (laughs) with some good stuff. (laughs) This is the Templeton six year from Templeton, Iowa population, 362 small town, strong spirit. And we've talked about Templeton before a staple of rude boy, Kyle and 45.75% alcohol by volume. It is a 91.5 proof. 750 milliliter bottle and uh cheers to the new year cheers to you Howard blues cheers to you watching or listening wherever and whenever you may be ah yeah that's that's some good stuff all right so we'll get the glass here there we go 
And got to throw out uh, the shout out again to Rude Boy Kyle. Because, well, he got us going with the Templeton. So back into the Triple B fridge. <clears throat> Can't call it the beer fridge because I have almost as much whiskey in there as I do beer. <laughs> so, cheers. Power Blues. Oh, God, that means I have to drink the IPA. Mm. Oh, that's smooth. I do that's enjoy smooth. some nice Templeton. That was not smooth. That was terribly bitter and not in a fun way. <clears throat> well, you know, Howard, you uh, you could have some tasty Templeton, too. Oh, do, do, do you deliver? Not anymore. <laughs> 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 After that first sip, I'm staying here. Unless uh, you send the uh, Bitterman, send a car around. I must go to Howard Brews to deliver some booze. I do have to say that uh, I do have a surprise for you. And it's not my surprise per se, but it is a surprise for you. So I'm throwing that out because hopefully I can get the surprise to you soon or it's going to be uh, during the Royal Rumble. Okay. Yeah. Well, I got, I got a couple surprises for you too. Good, sir. But I was, mm. I was waiting until the Royal Rumble. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Oh, that's I mean, good. You know, it's 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 not like you're never up on my side of town, man. I I, I mean, I wouldn't say up on the hill, but I mean, <laughs> but, but close enough, man. Close, close enough. closer than I am to home. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, speaking of you know surprises, things like that. Uh, you know what? I actually uh paid a visit uh to the Triple B Brewmaster uh this week. So and what did he have to say? Uh, you know, it was uh, one of those things. I uh, I had a beer for him. Uh, we've talked about it on the show. I have that uh, Wild Series Sour Key Lime Pie uh, Ghost that I so said I would save him one. And uh, just so happened, uh, my, my nephew was uh, in town from Fargo, staying with his dad, who lives over in Mandan. Um, and so he was over here baking cookies with my... Uh, with my family and he needed a ride home home and i gave him a ride and i'm like well hell i'm going across the river i'm going to mandan hey local geek are you home i got something for you so uh i, I delivered that to him he's got it and uh get her i'll tell you in the next few weeks the local geek is coming back to the triple b wow uh to have that beer on the show so mm. Hey, teaser for you. If you're a big fan of the episodes with the uh, the local geek, he'll be back on soon. So Hopefully he's figured out what he wants to brew next as well, so then he can share the info and the process of going about that. Yeah, he uh, he said he, he didn't have anything in the works yet um, when I was there. I told him that was okay. He could be on the show anyway because <laughs> i was kind of like he's like oh i'm gonna have to save that for the show i don't have anything in the works so i just i told him i said listen listen we've kind of uh gotten to the point where people just invite themselves on i mean you just got to pull a big d in like two hours before the show hey guys i'm available and okay mm -hmm. sure come on down so uh yeah he's going to uh Trying to keep an uh, eye out, and in the next few weeks, he will be uh, be joining us for an episode. So, all right. Did did we happen to remodel the entrance yet? Uh, cover up the uh, entrance to the Triple B a little bit better, so that it's more difficult for stragglers to find. You know, I, I you know, listen. I try and remodel it every time that somebody just kicks down the door, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. they 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 seem to keep finding the door. I I don't. <laughs> I mean, let, let me let me tell you, you know, kidder. Every now and then, you you, uh, you hit the merch uh, store pretty hard, and 
I understand with the amount of drywall and sheetrock that we're putting up to try and hide this damn door. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I get it, man. I get it. Some expense to this that we never expected. We got to pay for this damn thing somehow. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> not paying for itself. It'd be great if <clears throat> people would visit beerbluesbs.com. Click on merch. Buy some stuff. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Uh, Jitter, since we're in kind of this interesting transition, just to fill people in, if you're wondering what I'm up to, because usually I'm painting or such. Um, funny story, I, I had to fix a toy of Junior's, and so I got my trusty super glue, and it, gosh, the, the cap was kind of stuck, so I had to get some pliers and open it up, and uh, the handy-dandy nozzle is, uh, as you can see, missing. It's glued itself to the inside of the cap, so unfortunately, this uh, bottle of super glue has kind of got uh, a shelf life now. Uh, and so I'm sitting here with a uh, pile of uh, miniatures from Bones 5, and I'm just sitting here assembling them. So hmm. in case people are wondering what Howard's working on, I'm assembling miniatures and gluing them together, trying not to glue my fingers together as we drink IPA. But there you go. There's the Howard Hobby update for the episode. Very nice. It's 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 great that you're working with your hands. If only you were helping even more with your hands. Wow, that's a both a transition and a dig at me. Wow, <laughs> that's like multitasking. I know. I get the whiskey, and then the brain starts turning. Ah, just magic how whiskey helps me. Uh, yeah, so I uh, f was finally able to watch the Metallica Helping Hands concert. Uh, we had this show last week, and so uh, I was not able to watch the live show. Had to wait a few days for it to actually be available again to watch on demand. Sat down, listened to the show, rocked out enjoyed it so <clears throat> first of all uh, there are a bunch of other celebrities there uh, jimmy kimmel was hosting the show and then they had other various people discussing pieces and how they work with the helping hands organization and their organizations in relation to donating and helping people that sort of thing and uh, mike rowe was also there talked about his Mike Rowe Works organization, which is a great organization uh, to get people into the uh, trained and then into the workforce. And then the show concert, Greta Van Fleet opened the show and had a nice set, 20 plus minute set. You're familiar with Greta Van Fleet, aren't you, Howard? Um. I don't know a lot of their uh, stuff, um, but I do use one of their songs for hockey. That was one I picked up from, uh, oh, from the uh, episode we did with Clinton Cunanan of Another Lost Year. He uh, mentioned that he had been listening to uh, Greta Van Fleet. And so I, I'm like, huh, let me, uh, well, let me listen to a tune or two. So that's about as much as I know of them is maybe a song or two. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh I but mean, you know there's sound yeah kind of a like a dirty southern rock kind of ask <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah. the, the way that i explain is a heavy emphasis on led zeppelin with a little bit of queen sprinkled in yeah, i can see that i can see that well i was thoroughly enjoying their set as that was truly the first time i have seen them perform uh it's also three brothers in the band also an interesting factoid i didn't know until the credits rolled after the whole show but impressive um i thoroughly enjoyed it i would love to see them in concert and i'm sad that metallica on tour does not have greta van fleet opening for them because truthfully, Ice Nine Kills is a terrible band. I hate it. I hate that their lead singer is 
everywhere on everybody else's tracks because apparently that's what you need to do to whore yourself out to get popularity or notoriety. Not a fan. And <clears throat> they're opening night two uh, before Five Finger Death Punch and then Metallica with the uh, headlining set. It would be so awesome if we could blow them out of the water, put Greta Van Fleet in there so then I could see them live in person because that would be a much better show. Now, that's kind of, I don't know, what you could say, uh, shall we say, direction for Ice Nine Kills? Hey, actually make a good show so that I actually enjoy it when we see them in Phoenix. Or I'll still hate them and still think they suck because not a fan of their music, not a fan of Spencer Charnas on every damn track that's been out in the past year and a half. And he's not that good. Not a fan. But it would be awesome to see Greta Van Fleet. I am looking forward to seeing Mammoth in concert. That's uh, Wolfgang Van Halen. Band. Looking forward, that's, uh, of course, Eddie Van Halen's son. So looking forward to seeing and hearing them live in concert. They're opening night one before Pantera on the concert. And this will be my first time seeing Pantera in person. Couple firsts. First time seeing a concert in Phoenix. First time seeing those bands. I have seen, obviously, Metallica before and Five Finger Death Punch before. I'm just hoping that it's all around a good experience and a good show. Also hoping that we get to go to a couple of uh, good restaurants that we discovered in Phoenix in the past uh, two times we've been to the PHX, including Yard House. Howard, have you heard of Yard House before? Um, talked about it, probably. I think you've talked about it because the, the name is familiar. I don't know like anything about it. I just know I've heard the name. I think probably from the last time. Actually, I think it was uh, you talked about it uh, when uh, Big D came to us live from Phoenix. Future Howard will put the episode number up. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I recall you talking about it then. It's a great, great place. There's several of them, more than several. There's a lot of them across the U.S. And the closest one to us is in Minneapolis. But it's kind of a classic rock restaurant and bar where they also have like a hundred beers on tap. And the food's fantastic. I think we need one here and an Outback. Let's do it. You got uh, like a cool mill, mill and a half sitting around just collecting dust, collecting interest. We can turn that mill into like more. No, I, I, no. I don't, Kidder. Um, Man, I guess we yeah. need to sponsor this show first. So when we start making millions, hey, I promise to open an Outback and a Yard House. Anyway, the concert was really good. Metallica came on and uh, did an acoustic-ish set. Uh, basically, James had an acoustic uh, guitar, sang some covers and other Metallica songs in a semi-acoustic fashion and then they came back after a short intermission and kicked some ass with uh, the straight up metallica yeah including the live debut of lux eterna i'm excited to hear that and of course that'll be four months after the album's out and so i'll have that album burned in to uh, a cd player or mp3 player somewhere looking forward to it no i, I think you're gonna have a good time with it you know that being down in phoenix i know you enjoy seeing metallica and, and all of that mm -hmm. so should be good and phoenix is is a gorgeous area you know it is in the desert and so people think wow it's just a bunch of rocks and sand and stuff it's actually really gorgeous around there just how it all looks how it all feels i love it Love the past couple times that I've been there. Lots of uh, various themed bars. And I think of it somewhat as a, a cross between the best bars in America. Uh, may that show rest in peace from the Travel Channel and uh, Bar Rescue. 
Of course, uh, John Taffer with Bar Rescue talking about a lot of things that bars need to do to survive, to elevate their brand, oh, you know, things like that, right? And there's so many bars in the downtown area with different themes that it's it's just amazing to try, to go to the different bars. And we had a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> Howie Blues, I was in an Irish pub in phoenix and it was in the basement of a restaurant in a, a building anyway i don't know if a restaurant was in the building too but i think there was one and and it was like in a back alley to get in there it was it was awesome is traditional irish pub also went into a an english what would you call it not a cornish hen but uh, like a cornish pastry pub that was also two stories and we closed them down and got a tour of the entire building, including where they're developing. And I'm sure it's open now or the place isn't even open anymore. Uh, but we got a tour of the entire place, traditional Cornish pastries and their spin on those as sandwiches and uh, like dinner. And that was cool. Op the, the whole restaurant area was an open air a portion of the building where you know the giant garage doors on the side of the building so the whole place was essentially open for the two stories that they had then there's also a place called hannies uh for whatever reason it felt like uh, we were creeping when we went to hannies it's an old department store where they've turned it into a bar restaurant so there they also have three stories uh, there's also the story of w uh, someone uh, dying in the store after falling in the elevator shaft, right? Interesting. So they actually have glass or, uh, you know, plexiglass around portions of that elevator and on the floor of the lift where you can go from the main floor up to the second floor and then changing rooms upstairs. And there's a bunch of glass and mirrors. So it, it's very trippy. The lights are down very low, and then they have extra effect lighting. And it, it's such a cool place. Great cocktails and great food, great appetizers, and just had a great experience there. I think we went there uh, two or three times uh, when, when we were there as well. Uh, that's also where we met Lillian Garcia got to talk to her for a little while and mandy rose or mandy Sachs, as she's known because she got this she got sacked from wwe we talked about that a few weeks ago as well let's see also there's uh i can't remember the name is club 55 or something like that but it's it's somewhat of a more upscale exclusive uh, club very limited seating and and we went in there and had a a couple drinks just to experience it i think that was in glendale and there's also a whole uh outdoors shop area of the, the glendale the town uh where they have lights strung across the streets it's a gorgeous area so if you're in the phoenix mesa glendale area just go out and explore there's a lot of stuff down there it's really cool and i wouldn't mind living there i'm just gonna throw that out there i i was i was gonna ask you kidder if you're gonna be one of those guys here you know come a snowbird fly down to arizona every winter i mean i might end up just moving down there fly back here to see the family in the summer <laughs> screw yeah. screw snowbirds yeah, i love the 115 degree temperatures i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i i don't know that i could uh put up with that although i should have known you were a big warm weather person i i remember <laughs> our freshman year of college <laughs> was negative 70 out with wind chill you, you know i come back from class all bundled up so that i'm you know can survive Mm -hmm. You have the room cranked to like 80, sitting there in shorts and a Hawaiian shirt. Ah. So it's like instant sweat as soon as you walk in. <laughs> With the door closed. 
Yeah, I, I guess I should have known that. It's all right. I I did get a little tired of the fall when it was still 95 outside and no air conditioning to bring it down to 80 <laughs> inside. <laughs> Because some of those days, uh, I think you remember sitting there, the window open all night, so then you could get the room down to 78 before the sun came up again, and the fan running, and then during the day, just sitting there. <sighs> what oh, do you yeah. want to do? Nothing. Oh, if we went to eat, we could have air conditioning. Okay, but then we have to get up. <laughs> like melting into the chair at least that only really like lasted for like usually like a week or two mm -hmm. and then it was like okay now it's we're clearly into fall and it's not bad um god who was the i'm trying to remember who was the the donor because it was one of the girls dorms was named after the person but she was the donor for a large chunk but part of her donation was that the girls dorms got ac in the Boys' dorms didn't. I was trying to remember. Because that was the story I always heard. Norrin? Because oh. I, I think Norrin was the other hall next to McVeigh and West. I don't think it was Norrin. Brannon? No. It was in that same complex, though. So it was Norrin. I thought it started with an S. Uh, Squires was uh, another one that had the dining center in it. Yeah, but and that was know. a women's dorm. Yeah, I thought I could have sworn there was residence a... hall. We should know better. We both served on on ARH. It's the I'm... Association of Residence Halls. I uh that's never quite that pretentious. There's still dorms to me. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was it? Was it like Selkie or there was a Selkie Hall. I think that's what it was. Because there's was, there's was the two girls' dorms as part of that complex. There's the two boys' dorms. And then there was Brannon, which was mixed. Yeah. Uh, so Brannon had air conditioning. I remember that. And then McVeigh and West did not. And then Selkie and Norrin were the other two. Uh, because Brannon was just north of us. And then it was Selkie and Norrin as he went toward the Cooley. And yes, I, I think those also had air conditioning. And I, I don't know if they've gone through all of them and at least done community air conditioning in them. Because that's something that we pushed for to get done, at least for the common areas, right? I mean, make the building generally cool. Excuse me, generally cooler, but I don't know if it ever if it ever uh, got done. But yeah, uh, Selkie was and Norrin were the other two in our Wilkerson complex, and then Squires, Hancock, Beck, and Walsh were over uh, in that where Squires had the dining center <clears throat> between Princeton and Oxford. Uh, there's Smith, Johnstone, and Fulton, kind of part of the that. Uh, complex as well, but those were more of the Smith Fulton and then Swanson on the other end. And uh, Conference Center is also there. We can't forget about the uh, Conference Center. And Diane, shout out to uh, Diane listening up in the Northeast if she's listening. <laughs> I'll have to let her know now. <laughs> Hey, by the way, you get a shout out. One thing I did learn from the local geek, a mutual friend of ours, Jonah, who was in town, who didn't didn't visit me, by the way, didn't look uh, me up. So I have to get him a lane move. It is a lane move, which is unexpected for Jonah. Uh, but I did hear that every now and then he checks out little bits of the show. So oh. I, I he gets a pass. You know, it's like, oh, thanks well, at least... for your viewership or listenership. Yeah, I... I, I don't know that he checks out like every episode, but apparently every now and then he uh, he he checks out a little bit or listens to a little bit. Yeesh, we're coming up on the hour mark. I still got IPA. Um, I better finish this so we yeah. can get to what's on tap round two and I can now. drink something decent. Hurry up. I'm almost out of my whiskey. There he goes. One, two, three. Ugh. He still has some left. No, it's gone. You got it? I got it. Are you sure? I'm sure. Is it going to come back? No, Maybe. no, but I, <laughs> I did not enjoy that. <laughs> I, that look? 
I did not enjoy that in the uh, in the least. <clears throat> well, well, how about we go right into it then with your what's on tap number two, because you need to clear that nasty taste out of your mouth. You have something better for the second one, or are you just continuing to punish yourself? Um, you know. I, I I may or I may not, Kidder. Um, I've had this beer on the show before, but I can't remember what I rated it because when I was picking up these seasonals, I literally just they were all on one shelf, and I just dink 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 dink. That's how I ended up with the cranberry cinnamon last week. I knew I'd had this one, but it was kind of one of those like I had a had one spot left in the pick a six container, and I just uh, I was like, well, there's nothing else here that app you know like nothing else calling to me, so I'll have this. Um, it's been a while, Kidder. So let's let's go back to the official beer of Farva. That's right, from the Spetzel Brewery in Shiner, Texas. <laughs> Another one. We got to keep it, Spetzel Brewery on top. Yep, <laughs> it's it's the return of the Shiner Holiday Cheer. That's right. It's an ale brewed with peaches and pecans. 5.4% alcohol by volume. But I can't remember what I rated this. I know I had it on the show. Episode 39, and you said, quote, you definitely get the peach, not so much the pecan. Dot, dot. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that was your rating. Thanks, uh, Local Geek. I referred to your spreadsheet. Yeah, that, that sounds like it. Yep, it definitely smells like peaches. Let's see if that, let's see if that rating holds up, Kidder. Yep, there's definitely the peach right off the bat. It's got to cut through all of that IPA hoppiness. But, uh, yeah. And there's the pecan. Yep, late as usual. So, about the same as last time. Uh, but you know what? Compared to that IPA I just drank, I'll take it. Uh, how's that? So, yes, it's the return of the Shiner Holiday Cheer. And Kidder, this rounds up my seasonals, so I'm back to regular stuff. I mean, it'll still be weird and strange. Don't, let, let's let's not lose the uh, storyline here, but uh, we'll be done with the seasonals. Uh, Kidder, I mean, you're already drinking whiskey. I don't, I don't know. I don't, oh, yeah. I, I didn't know if you were going to switch it up for this What's on Tap or if we're <laughs> just uh, going to get back into the show. Well, I mean, I got uh, maybe three quarters of an inch of whiskey left. I've been enjoying the good stuff here. It's it's going down very quick tonight and very smooth. <sighs> I also had a, an epiphany of sorts recently. And maybe not quite an epiphany, but to some degree it is. Because I looked through my liquor as I was moving some things around to accommodate the uh, new bottles <laughs> that uh, now are housed. And I went, man, I have a lot of whiskey. I need to drink more on the show. So I don't know if I'm going to be buying much beer coming up aside from the ones that I need to drink because... I have these uh, Smirnoff Ice Pineapple Lemonades and these Simply Spiked Lemonades. And let's see, do I have... That's uh, another Smirnoff. Uh, the Blue Raspberry Lemonade. And I don't even have any of the Alani in here. So there's some Alani... Uh, I found the Alani brand by their Alani new energy drinks. Well, rewind to when we were in Des Moines last year, not last year. Well, when you're watching this is last year. Currently, it was six months ago. We found <clears throat> Alani uh, seltzers, alcoholic seltzers. And I was intrigued because Alani is very flavorful, flavorful. Anyway, fast forward to a month or so ago, found 
some different Alani's that weren't seltzers. And I hope there's still some left upstairs because I haven't had any yet. And that'd be something to have on the show. And I need to add into the fridge, but I have those to get through the ones in the door that the whiskey to get through, (sighs) man, it seems like I'm just going to be wasted 24 seven. I won't be, I promise, because this is really the only time of the week that I typically drink. But when I also uh, try some of these, I will make sure to give a quick review because it probably won't be during this show special occasion to open those. Kidder, uh, some uh, bad news. Um, I Glue's gone. So... Mission accomplished. I completed uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a partial figure. So, um, time to uh, <clears throat> break open a new glue. Mm. Oh, you're you're really stuck with that one, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. Missed the pile. I have a pile of recycling from all the gift boxes and gifts that arrived for christmas whoa speedy glue came rushing out of there careful you might end up invading a country if you talk about being russian is that too political for the show i'm sorry it seemed it seemed like it was the right thing to say at the time that's too political uh you know uh, 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 I uh, I I think uh, future Howard will allow it. <laughs> okay, how about this? I'm gonna throw one extra thing with it. Then, can we get like one billion dollars funneled to this show? Because they're funneling, I don't know, fifty, sixty, seventy billion dollars a week or whatever it is through Ukraine and the help to Ukraine. So if if we can get a tenth of that. We can have this show on the air for another way longer than it needs to be, whatever that time period is. Gosh, that's both a plug and a political thing. I think Future (laughs) Howard's going to cut that. (laughs) But then he, Kurt Howard just made a joke about it. So, damn, it's probably got to stay in the show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got to learn to stop making jokes about this stuff. It just happens. You know, normally, that's our lives. Just one giant joke. But <laughs> well, you, you might see me look over to the other side every now and then, Kidder. I, I, I have my phone over here. I'm recording yeah. some of this uh, assemblage of miniatures because uh, it might show up in a future Howard's Cave of Wonder. Wow. Yeah. A double record at once. That, that's um, smart. <laughs> uh, well, it, it it has more to do with the idea, and I, I just turned it off. I've kind of been doing small clips of it. Uh, I have an idea, since I have all of these Bones 5 figures that I need to assemble, um, I might do a Howard's Cave of Wonder that's all about the assembly process. And it just, it just like made sense to go, I even did this during, you know, recording of Beer Blues and BS, and so I wanted some footage. Good job, Howard. Proud of you, Jinko. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? I might get this content creator thing figured out someday. Just watch it. I'm going to give you rights to get on Instagram and post on the Triple B page. You you settle down. Yeah, yeah let's not do that. One, because I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> you dick. Uh, what was number uh, two? Uh, two... Crap, what was two? <laughs> it was so bad he forgot about it. Uh, no, it was that the first joke landed so so well that uh, I'm like, oh, yes, that was a good joke. Good joke, Howard. And then you're like, and what's two? And I'm like, damn, I said two, didn't I? Oh, Should have left what I was ahead. No. Shows you for drinking peach pecan. Uh, the IPA taste is gone, but the, um, you know what? That peach pecan? Yeah, it's uh. Now that's ugh. getting yeah. Now it's kind of coming back as like, oh yeah, this is uh, it, it's not that great. Ugh. Great reminder for you. 
we're still, uh, you know, as we're uh, a reminder, which reminded me of this, we're still in- encroaching on the 100th episode mark. And that means you watching or listening right now can enter to win some Triple B merch. Right, Howard? Right. And, you know, in a thing where I teased earlier that I would need to, you know, write something down so I could reference it later. That's right, kidder. People have until February 16th of 2023 to do the following to, in order to get into this contest. That's right. <laughs> I wrote down the <laughs> deadline, so I remembered. Uh, yes, here's what you got to do. It's very simple. One, you have to be a subscriber to the Triple B YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube, go to Beer Blues BS, and, uh, you know, click the link. It'll take you right to YouTube. Or go to YouTube, search Beer Blues and BS, and uh, find us. Hit subscribe, cost you nothing, and uh, that's the first step to getting into this contest. The second step is take and sharing your favorite, you know, video from our uh, past on, you know, just share it out on Facebook. Fairly simple thing to do. And the third thing is in that post where you are sharing that video, and it could be any video. It could be a Howard's Game of Wonder. It could be one of Kidder's logs. It could be episode one for all we care it could be a sneak peek video which would be kind of weird because those did not do well (laughs) uh you know but it could be any of our content you share it and the third step you tag beer blues and bs the podcast that way when that uh date comes around for the 100th episode i can do a quick search to see where it's been shared um and then match it up to our subscribers on youtube we'll do a random named drawing on episode 100 and you could win your very own triple b pint class courtesy of this guy who bought an extra glass and needed something to do with it so hey you could win this extra pint glass and have your very own triple b uh beverage merch yeah there you go merch swag <laughs> yeah, swag is the word i was looking for swag oh, was swag. the word i was looking for I, I, saw, I, I saw that in the uh facebook post tonight you get like her, i saw that you put swag i'm like damn that's a good word <laughs> <laughs> thank you I, that's, uh, that's years of radio promotion for you <laughs> what kind of sleazy bs can you come up with swag <laughs> 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 yeah that's that's what it is swag <laughs> Hey, I'm I'm at the cell phone store. Come on down and get your radio station Mm T-shirt. I got some pizza certificates for you, too, if you come see me. Kidder, I'm not going to lie. Between these two beers, I'm feeling it. Um, So that was actually kind of hard to... Oh, you're you're getting getting there. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say, that was a... A very difficult little thing to like remember or think of words while trying to pitch the contest. Uh, it can also know, you, be can also be glue fumes. I mean, I am sitting here gluing models together. Here's a question: Do you want to go get sandwiches right now? Yeah, uh, no, but I have a feeling by the time this show is over, I'm going to want some sort of snack. Okay, well, if you want sandwiches, then we know what, where you are. <laughs> <laughs> You get a panicked call from my wife in the middle of the night. I can't find him. Go to the nearest subway. He's there. He's there. <laughs> we don't have an underground transportation system here. No, the restaurant. Right. Yeah, I, I understand. I mean, I, I'm i uh, feeling the whiskey. I'm also thinking that after this little bit that's left, I might need some more. Hmm. Um. More. As I more, you want more? Yes, I I definitely do want more whiskey. Who doesn't want any more whiskey? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It only took us till episode ninety three to make an Oliver Twist joke. Of course, being me that does it just continues to prove just how relevant and with the times power it is. <laughs> Going all the way back for a Dickens joke. <laughs> Help. I snorted because of that. Hell, you're going to make a Joseph Technicolor dream coat joke next. I, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> At least you were in that one. 
Twice. I was in that show. Yeah, twice, I know. Actually. At least you were in that one. Should we should we make a South Pacific joke too? I was there for that one too. Oh god, why were you there for that one? That show sucked. I, I think I ran lights. I don't remember. Or sound. I don't know. Yeah. I did something for that. I don't know. I saw you do these things. Why did you make me do this when I couldn't drink? <laughs> What kind of friend were you then? Um, <laughs> you know, it was one of those things. Like I, I so I was a, I was always the theater kid. I liked doing theater, but actually, I never really liked musicals. I'm not really a musical guy. I, I only have a couple that I enjoy. You know, and that would be things like Phantom of the Opera and Joseph and the Amazing Dream Te- Dreamcoat, Avenue Q, excellent show. I enjoy those, um, but most musicals I don't really care for, and so. Uh, but it was one of those things like it was the only theater, you know, stuff that you could do at high school. So, yeah, I did South Pacific. I hated South Pacific. That was a terrible show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I set up the lights for that. That's what it was. I helped him do that and the sound because I was one of the two people who knew what was going on with that. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Good times. Yeah. Uh, a die 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 I I I know it's nothing even close to related to South Pacific, but it seemed right at the time. In relation to that, you and I found as watching CBC when we were in college in Grand Forks, we had access to watch the CBC, and they had a show this hour has 22 minutes, and of course. The, you know, insider baseball uh, reference with that, uh, the hour has 22 minutes is because the content within the hour is only 22 minutes because of the commercials and the other time taking it up, even though it was a half hour show. So, right. But Colin Mockery, one of the constant Canadian contributors on that show and that show uh howard is still going on they have new episodes they're still airing the show with different people i don't think it's funny now but i also don't know canadian politics anymore because we're not watching the cbc every day and i it's not colin mockery and people that i thought were hilarious at the time yeah my favorite um story with that still uh to this day Uh, Because that was in our freshman year when we really started watching that. And we were in a suite in McVeigh. So for those who maybe don't know, we had our room and then the people next door had their room. But we were connected and had a shared bathroom between the four people. And uh, (laughs) our... (laughs) our, uh, Our suite mates at that time, one was from Canada. And the other one, uh, he had a twin brother um, who was also on our wing um but he he rocked a mullet and was kind of into racing and things like that we used to call them uh mullet man and canada boy Uh, yeah to which i i had a whole theme song to that you know yeah as well bring it back man bring it back Yeah. yeah i'm trying to remember the words to it um Anyway, but we were sitting in our room uh, watching, (laughs) and this hour has 22 minutes, and uh, Canada comes by, and he he looks in, he goes, why are you watching this? I'm Canadian, and I don't even understand Canadian politics. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. It's it's funny, man. It's, uh, It's funny. That, that was really the only insight into Canadian politics because I would watch uh, BBC or sorry, CBC News with uh, Peter Mansbridge. And then the closest CBC affiliate was out of Winnipeg. So we would get Winnipeg news and politics through the local CBC affiliate there and watching Canadian television. Uh, and then uh, the the show on the weekend. What what was it? Just the, the gas station show. Oh well, we didn't watch Corner Gas because I or didn't Corner I, Gas. That was on uh, CTC, right? Yeah, and that didn't that didn't start until we were kind of out of college. Gotcha. So 
like I, I discovered that one in Montana. Oh, okay. Is where I I discovered that one, which is a right. if you guys can ever track down Corner Gas, I I recommend it. It's terrific. Th- there was the other uh, the other show uh, with <clears throat> God dang it, I'm I'm just at a loss for each piece involved. the The other show, but the filmmakers in Canada, and it had the tragically hip. For the theme, yep. uh, make the th- uh, the song they use for the theme song of the show. What the hell was that show? I, I, you know what? I don't remember the name of the show. We you watched made it. a movie once. Yeah, blow a high dough is the theme song. Yeah. yeah, but that's like the thing I remember from that show was was that song. Um, Damn it! So, yeah, Drags I, it's a hip. Let Gord rest in peace. I, I was trying to think you know, of how the uh, theme song for Mullet Man and Candle Boy went, and all I can remember is the the beginning, which was Mullet Man and Canada Boy. They fight with <laughs> hope. They fight with joy. <laughs> but that's all I got. I know there was more to it, but that that's what I got. That's that's uh, all that's coming back to me right now. Maybe if I drink more of the Shiner, <laughs> it'll yeah, drink run. more. It'll bring it back. Because, well. Then we weren't drinking. No. We were just painting for a class project for you. Yeah. Good times. Good times. So oddly enough, we're talking about TV shows. or Sorry. Talking about TV shows. Because, you know, Canadian television. Uh, I actually saw a couple movies recently. You know, last week we talked about the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special which we both saw talked about that last week so go go check that out I, just last week's episode side note from that kidder i just i just want to add to that i have had um one of the songs from that show stuck in my head the one that kevin bacon sings with the oh, uh, old 97s uh, yeah that has been stuck in my head all week i so. love it love it uh, that, Kevin that Bacon's one, a genius. That one might get downloaded, and uh, actually, he didn't write that. Uh, so the old ninety sevens are actually James Gunn's band. So James Gunn plays in a band, the old ninety sevens, um, and, and Gee, so I he... why they were in a movie <laughs> for Marvel <laughs> Universe. I wonder what could it be. <laughs> yeah, um, it was interesting. I watched an interview where. Uh, Kevin Bacon was talking about how James Gunn uh, pitched him because somebody said, was this a hard pitch? You know, did did James Gunn really have to sell you on this? And uh, Kevin Bacon goes, no, he just said, hey, I have this idea for this holiday special with the Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, would like you to be in it. He goes, I'm in. He goes, I didn't read the script. Didn't realize I'd be playing myself. (laughs) He's like, I was just in and then was surprised. He's like, I didn't even know I'd be singing in it, but uh, was glad it's been a fun experience so that was kind of uh interesting but he talked about how uh it goes back to a joke in the first guardians movie where they mentioned kevin bacon and he said uh that when he sat through that movie he didn't know he was that there was a reference to him in it (laughs) so the first time he sat through guardians there's a reference he ended up just loving the movie and the reference was a nice touch he literally got out of the theater called his wife and said hey uh I'm going to be late because I'm going to sit through this movie a second time. <laughs> he actually watched it back to back. So perfect. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a cool interview. Um, but anyway, I, I derailed you. So yeah. you watch some movies. What, what, yeah. what have you been watching? Uh, well, you know, going back, uh, I do enjoy a lot of Kevin Bacon with City on the Hill. If you haven't had a chance to watch any of the previous episodes, I think season three is out now. I could be wrong, but watch City on a Hill. Uh, Kevin plays a character called Jackie Rourke, which centered around the Boston area. Boston, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a great show. You got to watch it. It's a classic TV from pretty much late 80s, early 90s kind of the time frame for that but that's a good show enjoy that and that's on showtime originally so i believe 
you have to have a subscription to Paramount Plus and Showtime to be able to watch it. But I'm sure there's other ways to watch it. So watch City on a Hill. See Kevin Bacon doing some work there with a quite, quite an uh, uh, amazing mustache. Oh, I am jealous. But this past week, since last episode, I've watched two movies. I know Howard's got the, the shocked eyes right now. Those movies include Glass Onion, A Knives Out Story, and as I'm trying to remember what the hell it was, because it was a movie, Bullet Train, with Brad Pitt and pretty much every other freaking person out there, which is the same for, for Glass Onion. Okay, Howard, have you seen either of those? I have uh, not. The closest I've gotten was I watched um, an interview with Ryan Johnson where he taught he broke down the first scene of uh, Glass Onion. That's uh, that's it. I haven't seen it. I want to see it. Um, I enjoyed Knives Out um, a, a great deal, um, even if I kind of figured out who the killer was pretty quickly on. But I enjoyed it. It was a really well-written mystery, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, crap, kidder. I made it this far. I finally glued my fingers together. Um, <laughs> you sucker. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing it, so I'm trying to avoid spoilers yes. for, for this. So, But I, I'll, I'll be interested to hear your take on it. And I don't know, did you see Knives Out, the first yes. one? Okay, yeah. so good. You Actually, can give me watched a... it with Brother Nico when we were in Omaha for one of the Sioux games. Good, because then you can give me a, a comparison if it's like as good as the first one. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's start with Bullet Train. Uh, do you know the premise of Bullet Train, Jaco? You know, I, I saw a trailer a while ago for it, and... Uh, it was a while ago, so I can't mm -hmm. say that I really remember it. So sure, you break it down for me. So I think it's on Netflix as well, so you can still watch that. And then the Knives Out Glass Onion movie is a Netflix original, so that's obviously on Netflix. So you should be able to watch both of them uh, for free if you have a subscription. I know it's not free if you have a subscription, whatever. You should be able to watch them if you have a subscription and uh, be able to digest them for yourself. So Bullet Train, <clears throat> Brad Pitt's the main character. And throughout the movie, there are so many interesting things that happen that it's ridiculous. I enjoyed the whole movie. In fact, Several times through the movie, I was laughing out loud at how ridiculous and how funny those pieces of the movie were. And so is it something that you should take serious when you watch it? Probably not. Is it something that is the greatest creative genius that's ever come to play? No. Is it something that if you have two hours and you want something to watch and not have to really think about, this is one of those movies. Please, <laughs> just watch it. Uh, Brother Nico actually said that he watched it in the theater. He went to the theater and watched it. So I can only imagine how the big screen actually had it. You know, my TV isn't that big. It's big enough, but... I enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed it. I would say a good four out of, well, three and a half out of five for for that. Almost gave it a four out of five, but, you know, there are some parts where, okay, it's not as funny as it should be, et cetera, but there's enough to that movie where it'll keep you engaged in the movie for the length of the movie and so i appreciate that because there are some movies that you go to and you and you find yourself or i find myself sitting there going 
okay, can we get on to the next piece? Because I am starting to lose interest. And I've had that happen in the theater and I've had it happen at home, watching it on, you know, TV on demand or whatever. There's that. Okay. So Howard, I think uh, I know your taste of movies and like stupid humor, funny humor, smart humor, etc. I think you would even get some enjoyment out of the movie. So I recommend you watch this. Uh, the acting is also good. And almost, you know, it has certain elements that are similar to Death to Smoochie. Oh. So there, there, there's a deep cut uh, that you would get. Uh, moving on to <clears throat> the other half of it with the Glass Onion, a Knives Out story. That one is similar to <laughs> the bullet train in content and context. Now, the first one and the second one, I believe, are very much in line. In fact, there are so many cameos in the second one that it's almost ridiculous. How did Netflix pay for that to happen? Uh, without giving out any pieces of the movie, spoilers, elements uh, that might peak or lower your interest. Howard, you need to see this. It's on Netflix. Carve out two hours of time. Set it aside. Watch it. We can digest it. I would love to talk about it. And Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig! I, I enjoy him as an actor. And I wish he'd do another James Bond, but I know it's not going to happen. I understand. He's a great Bond. He was a great Bond. And if you want to know our uh, thoughts on Bond, go back a few episodes because we talk about all of the James Bonds, all of the movies, talk about our favorites, our up, our downs, everything. James Bond, a few movies, a uh, few episodes back. Howard gives his takes uh, as well, which he pretty much is the expert on James Bond in this show. Yes, I am. Although I, I, I will have to admit, Peter, I still yeah. haven't seen the newest one. You know, it's okay if you don't. Just, just uh, skip it. Just no, no, just skip it. Completionist. No, I, gotta, I, 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 I know, I, but it doesn't exist. Just pretend it doesn't exist. Listen, I, I don't. I pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> I'll I'll see. And it. I don't like the Bond universe like you do. I'll see it at some point. Yeah, do it after the next Bond movie comes out. Because then you have something to lo like fall back on. Yeah, the main reason I haven't seen the new one is just lack of time. You know, like yeah, don't have time for the next however many years it takes them to make a new Bond movie. Just don't have time. Skip it. I, Skip I will say movie. Like I like James Bond and I and all of that, but man, they take a long time between films, and That's I can understand stupid. that. I, I I can understand if they were doing it and like every single one was like a masterpiece, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like there was a a gap between Knives Out and Glass Onion. Yeah, and I it wasn't I'm, that long. No, but there was a gap because he made um the Last Jedi. Brian Johnson made the Last Jedi in between the two. He, he, you know, he had time. He did another movie. He, because he wrote Glass Onion in 2020 while during lockdown. Yeah, that's when they filmed it. Uh, they filmed it after lockdown. I don't want to give away too much of the pieces, but a lot of people were pissed because elements from the COVID lockdown play into the movie. Yeah. Which makes which makes sense because he he talked about that that he was in lockdown and it was kind of his way of dealing with being locked down was to kind of write it in so he he addressed that in that interview I watched where he said um you know yes in this first scene they're wearing masks but this isn't a movie about wearing masks and I I'm just going off of what he said mm -hmm. I haven't seen it we'll yep. we'll dive into it at some point but just yeah please watch it soon. 
Well, it's still fresh in my memory. Uh, because, you know, I'm getting older, and I, I just don't remember as much as I used to, which wasn't necessarily the best to begin with <laughs> for the important things. Yeah. Important. Um, yeah, but anyway, back to back to Bond. Like, if every Bond movie was was good and excellent, I, I'd be okay with it. But yeah, it just seems like they take forever to mm-hmm. to come out, and it, yeah. it's a little little disheartening. Not that I need like a Bond movie every you know two years, but it'd be nice well, if they were a little bit quicker. Every five years would be fine. Yeah. Right, because even between the the last movie and the movie before that, which I have over there in the Daniel Craig collection, that was what yeah, almost five years itself, right? Uh, I mean, almost. It was a while. It yeah. was a while. I, and part of it is is that the guys, the producers behind Bond, they're very big into things like, oh, this year is going to be the 50th anniversary of Bond. So we're going to hold off putting this movie and, and do the movie on the 50th you know, anniversary. So they've yeah. done crap like that, where it's yeah. like, ah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll save not doing one this year so that we can do one on this anniversary or maybe they could have done two and made double the money just a thought yeah more money more money i am a huge fan of and forgive me howard because i am forgetting the title of the not the current bond movie i.e the last one that came up but the one before that uh you know, I could go over to the collection and, and figure it out. I forget the title, but I, yes, I love, love the title sequence where it's not only the intro of the movie as they come in, it's one camera shot. It's all done in one, you know, quote unquote take, right? But it's all built in. And it's all one camera sequence. I think I saw that three times in the theater because I went by myself. I went with you and uh, I think I went uh, with the missus. But I I just love the opening sequence. You know, they're they're in the Day of the Dead. They're going through the costumes, the music, the sequencing. I, I I just enjoy it. I don't know. It's the, it's the best way to, to talk about it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just love it. It's good bond. In fact, I know I've mentioned it before, but I purchased the Daniel Craig collection. It was on sale in 4K. So, you know, the, the newest Bond movies, aside from the piece of crap that came out recently, all in one collection in 4K, remastered etc we watched them back to back to back to back we ended up you know starting at at i don't know 7 p.m and finishing at 4 30 a.m and partially because i enjoy it but also because the missus wanted to continue the sequence and finish the story and yes uh well i guess side question howard you saw the latest one no. Okay. I saw I saw Spectre, but then I haven't seen the newest one. No. Right. Okay. So just skip it. And I think just because the whiskey made me forget that you mentioned that like, I don't know, four minutes ago that you haven't seen the latest one. And I, and I said skip it. So again, that whole movie made me forget and wish that I hadn't seen it. And paid the whatever price to see it in the theater. Because it's the biggest pile of a movie to come out in the James Bond movies since insert the worst James Bond movie here. Okay. Honor Howard, Majesty's Secret Service. Yes. So that movie is probably better than this pile that came out a year and a half ago. Don't watch it. Just skip it. 
pretend that it never happened skip it i don't want anything to do with it yes i'm hitting my microphone because i'm amped up it's not the whiskey it's the stupid movie skip that pile of garbage damn it i i didn't want to get amped up on this episode i wanted to have a good start to the year and look where we are damn it damn it well uh, Kidder, we are we're, we're slowly, like, very quickly, I should, should say, running out of time on this episode. Slow. I think we should. I listen. Words difficult. Freaking. Um, <laughs> You're not even drinking whiskey. What's wrong I, with you? I, I listen. That IPA. It did a number. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's hit some uh, wrestling news and uh, <clears throat> start bringing this kind of to a close. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Well, let's do some quick hits. Number one, AJ Styles. Phenomenal, right? That's part of his shtick, but also a phenomenal wrestler. Well, at house show, he uh, was injured in, of all places, Hershey, Pennsylvania, the chocolate capital of the universe. Uh, fans in attendance noted that he did a top rope spot to the outside of the ring, then was observed grabbing his ankle afterward. The official came over to talk to him, gave the X, which, as we know, is an injury. The match was stopped, and really, the information given at the time of this recording is that the injury is completely legitimate, not part of a storyline, not planned for a live event. He's supposedly dealing with an ankle injury and will be checked out, hopefully not requiring surgery because you know how that happens. Surgery and all of that uh, becomes exponentially longer in recovery, recuperation, and return. Hopefully just a sprain, uh, but he was having trouble putting foot uh, weight on his left foot and walked to the back by WWE officials. So there is that. So best of luck, best wishes to AJ Styles and his hopeful recovery. John Cena, he returned this evening. Uh, December 30th, 2022, to have his first match of the year. But in doing that, he has had a match in WWE each year for the past 20 years. Congratulations on having another match. No, I don't know the outcome of the match. I haven't watched it yet because it happened tonight. There it is. Figured out. It's two weeks ago at the time that you're watching and listening to this. Also, Charlotte Flair returned to WWE SmackDown. And you know what? She not only returned, she challenged Ronda Rousey, the SmackDown Women's Champion, to a championship match. A champion to a championship match. Guess what? Charlotte Flair has won the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship title again. And I believe that puts her on top for all-time championship wins in the women's division. In a Lucha Libre news, Dragon Lee has signed with the WWE. Hope he does well. Hope he has a great storyline. Hope he doesn't just end up on NXT and have to fight through the developmental league to get to somewhere where he can make a name for himself. Any uh, WWE news, Howard Blues? Uh, one, uh, I've been seeing reports that at a house show at Madison Square Garden, Bray Wyatt, in his uh, first match since being back with the company, broke a finger. So ah, Great. In other Bray Wyatt news, tonight he was attacked by Uncle Howdy which is likely his real-life brother, which Howard Blues, his brother is? Uh, that'd be Bo Dallas. Correct! I, I know this because uh, Lefty uh, 
has watched a little bit of NXT when Bo Dallas was there, uh, but she absolutely hated the whole, all you have to do is believe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that wasn't just in NXT. They continued that BS all the way through the main roster until he was fired because it's stupid. I hope he uh, Bray Wyatt continues with L.A. Knight in the short term and that L.A. Knight is able to move on and feud with somebody else because I really enjoy L.A. Knight. Let me talk to you. Because he kind of seems like the New Age Stone Cold in certain terms. Not all of them, but I'm throwing it out there. So let's hit the AEW side of the equation. All right. Well, Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti got married, and then she changed her name in the ring to Ty Mello. I don't know why, but... Side note. So they won the AAA Mixed Tag Team Championship like four months ago. They've now missed three different appearances and they've been stripped. You suck. And so you have been stripped of the AAA Tag Team Mixed uh, Tag Team Championships. They did a tournament and some other people won in the AAA world. So Ty Mello, Sammy Guevara suck at life, and they have lost a championship. Your thoughts on that, Howard? Uh, you know, I think part of it is the problem of you have AEW where, you know, it's not the schedule that, like, WWE is. And so, you know, to make good money, you have to go out and do these independent shows. And... Because of that, you're a big name. It makes sense that somebody would put a title on you. And sometimes, you know, hey, if, if Dynamite is calling, you're going to go do Dynamite. And you're going to skip, you know, AAA. Because Dynamite's the one that pays you every week. AAA is just a side hustle. So, it, yeah, it's kind of one of those things. I understand why they're out doing these other shows. But that can be a, a real challenge to keep up those commitments. Yeah, you got to show up to the shows, right? I mean, if we're going to be on a show, it's like us, right? If if we're not available for a show on the weekend, I mean, maybe we do another show or we just don't do a show, but that is a detriment to our product. So we need to think about that sort of thing before we make other commitments. So there's things that can happen. They potentially could have been there and not been part of the Jericho Appreciation Society and other matches or things that are happening, storylines, for instance, if they really wanted to. But, you know, TV makes them some money. So whatever. They also had a women's tag match with Ty Mello and uh, Anna Jay. So, and that was the final straw for the AAA to strip them of the AAA Mixed Tag Team Championships. And good luck working with AAA in the future because, you know, you get burned like that. You're not going to want to invite them back. Yeah. Burn some bridges. Go for it. Also, a lot has been uh, showing up, as I've observed, with Dynamite specifically coming up in 2023. Still on TBS, but a new look coming for Dynamite. They've got some uh, kind of reddish pink and blue lasers in their new visual set. <clears throat> Will it be in new graphics completely? Or in lower thirds, just the match graphics. I don't know. We'll find out here a week ago <laughs> as part of as you're watching this show. And yes, I will watch. I will debut them. I will talk about them in the next Beer Blues and BS because there's nothing more current than two weeks behind. Howard's laughing. Thanks for laughing at that. <laughs>
Um, I'm happy to say as well that Claudio Castagnoli is again the current Ring of Honor world champion because i don't know as this airs it's like a month and a half two months ago that he won back the ring of honor world championship so congratulations claudio castagnoli i'm happy that you're a world champion because you're awesome uh, other aw news tony shivani he's getting up there in age in a recent podcast you know two weeks old as of this recording that uh, he may not be as part of the commentary team or ring announcer team much longer because, well, damn it, he's getting old and it's a lot of work. So will he be retiring this year, next year? You don't know. I don't know. Tony Schiavone may not know. We'll find out as we continue through 2023 with AEW and FTR. Their contracts are coming due. They also just lost the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships a couple weeks ago. Will they continue? Well, Dax Harwood just uh, happened to say on his own podcast, which he just started, that he's not worried about winning every match. He knows he can't win every match, and he wants to bring up some talent as well to continue the wrestling legacy because he just loves what he's doing. So their championship reigns, they still have two titles as of this recording. It may be something where they may not be tag team champions of the AAA division and organization or any other tag team organization. They may be losing all of those because as their title reign and, and their contract ends, they may end up going back to WWE. It depends on how much WWE offers them. It depends on what they want to do as their career develops. But they've had a great time. They enjoy wrestling. It's not about winning every match. And Howard Blues, I know you typed that in. Did I pretty much take everything out of what you wanted to say, or is there more? <laughs> uh, Sorry. I, 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 no, no. Hey, listen, you, you covered it well. You, you covered it very well. Um, the thing that I would add in um, is, you know, you have, uh, this was um, Dave Meltzer's take on it, and I, I think it's a good take. He said, you've had these guys who have been probably the top tag team in wrestling this year. Absolutely. And yet... They haven't been given a real shot to compete for the AEW titles. They've been relegated to Ring of Honor. What does that say if you're if you are FTR? You know, hey, you're the best tag team in the world right now, but you're uh, you're on the secondary show, the right. side project. You're not, you know, going up against the acclaimed. Another point that Meltzer made is why on earth did we push? Swerve and Strickland. We could have had a summer of FTR versus the acclaimed and had some amazing matches. So that, that's the points I would add. <laughs> Finish it off. I want to drink. <laughs> uh, I, well, I was uh, I was going to say, Kidder, um, we were supposed to get a major announcement from Big D, but uh, you know what? You and I have been having an awesome show. A lot of great chat. We just out of time. We'll have to try and get that next week kidder we've been talking for quite a while and uh you know what we should probably wrap this show up um like i should wrap up this uh holiday cheer beer and uh you know hit the hay before i glue my fingers together again glue for the third time your damn beer drink it I can't listen. I I put it. In. I, I I'm working on it. You, listen, you you do those you do those plugs, man, and I'll uh, I'll I'll work on it after I finish this particular figure. I can figure out how it goes together. Uh, another beer or whiskey will help you put that together. Uh, I'm not having another kidder. Uh, I have a toddler who wakes me up in the morning. <laughs> eh, whatever whiskey will help that too. 
Okay, so let's get to the cheap plugs. First of all, Facebook and Instagram. Search us at Beer Blues BS. We're on both Facebook and Instagram. Please like us and subscribe to us. Share our stuff because we want to get out there to the masses. Yeah, help us get famous. Beer Blues BS on Facebook and Instagram. We are also all over the place. Our website, beerbluesbs.com. You can find us there to find the merch and find where we are on YouTube and on our audio versions. The merch store as well. Like I just said, beerbluesbs.com. Please check us out. Like us on all of the above. If you're look, uh, looking to listen to us on an audio version, we're all over the place, too, including Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, including iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio. We are on Stitcher, TuneIn, IMDb, Player FM, and, yes, Amazon Music. All of the above. Search Beer Blues and BS. And you'll find us. Please subscribe. Please like the episodes. Please share the episodes. We want to get out to everyone and anyone who can watch and or listen to the show. Sharing as caring and drinking whiskey also is the best thing. So you can do that by sharing us on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your anything social media share us beer blues bs and by the way you can win uh a pint glass power blues giving away pint glass for the triple b the full details just sharing us scroll back earlier in the episode howard talks about it you'll get it you could win (laughs) and he's probably got something on the screen here so anyway Let's get this thing out of here so then we can get to bed because, damn it, it's late and it's almost 2023 at this point. (sighs) Howard, I'm going to have to start singing the song. In heaven, there is no beer. No, it's Fight on Sue. That's on the other side of this picture. It's my Fighting Sue picture. I've got it right here, ready to go for when you come on down to have a couple beers or a whiskey uh, or something else while we watch Royal Rumble as it's coming up about the time that this airs. Anyway, he's our blues. I am the man, the best legend, Mark Kidder. Thanks for joining us for this and every edition of Beer, Blues, and BS. Please subscribe, like, and above all else, share, share, share this episode of Beer, Blues, and BS. We do appreciate you as we head into 2023. I'm the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Kidder. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Beer, Blues, and BS. Remember, there's free beer tomorrow. Keep your glass at least, well, this one's not half full, but a third full. Free beer tomorrow. We'll catch you on down this old frozen Tuscan highway in the next edition of Beer, Blues, and BS. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time. You have been listening to a UA production of Beer, Blues, and BS. If you enjoyed the show, help others find out about it by rating the show or leaving a review at your podcast listening service of choice. Thanks for listening, and may your glass never be empty. UA Productions presents A Glimpse Behind the Curtain. I uh, I think that's going to be an excellent episode. Yeah, because I uh, I got a little bit tipsy toward the end. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a week. It's been a while. 
It's okay. I'll uh, I'll do some cutting on the uh, the Doyle joke to make that one work. All right. That's so what I have do. planned. But it'll it'll be okay. It'll be okay. <clears throat> I, I will say, Kinder, I am glad we're kind of done. I'm running out of models that I feel like I can safely put together without pulling myself together. Like, I'm sitting here going through, like, well, ah, that's too complex. Uh, nope, not doing that one. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Um, I just shared a another video with you of what we are trying to pilot as we head into uh january okay give me a sec i got a model that's fighting me hard yeah, that's fine damn thing um on a side note we are 20 minutes from the new version of the triple b open being uploaded okay I'm pulling up this one oh stick you bastard I got overly ambitious. I'm like, I'll do this one model. And it's that's where it starts. It's like, ah, I'm going to fight you really hard as you're trying to do this. <laughs> <laughs>